Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, great leaders. Good evening, scholars. Good evening, lovers of wisdom and knowledge. We always say that that's exactly what philosopher means. A philosopher is a lover of knowledge, is a lover of wisdom. Thank you so much. Welcome to the community of leaders. That's where you'll find great leaders, you'll find great scholars. Uh, we are the community of leaders. We, we meet every Wednesdays to tackle leadership issues because we have realized that everything rises and falls uh, on leadership and leadership it's everything and everything is leadership. When things go right, it's because of leadership. And when things go wrong, because of lack of leadership. So we meet here every Wednesdays. Um, uh, leaders, professionals from all walks of life, uh, from politicians, you've got uh, members of the media, uh, you've got executives from, um, from private sector, from public sector, You've got academics from different universities. So it's a lovely place to meet. If you're a leader, you will always enjoy to be here. And we call it a conversation because it's exactly like that. Um, uh, we meet other peers where, where, where leaders empower other leaders. Um, uh, we, we always tell people that uh, this platform is special uh, people who are like um, um, academics who are used to lecturing and, and students that here, um, uh, people who are here are leaders, as I'm saying that already from great, uh, great leaders from all walks of life and are always humbled and honored uh, to, to host these great leaders. We, we learn a lot every Wednesday because we're here to correct each other, we're here to empower each other, we're here to sharpen each other, we're here to admonish each other as leaders. If there's anything that we are not doing correct, let us talk about it. This is a safe space uh, where as your leader, you can express yourself. So please don't be shy, don't be diffident, don't hold back, uh, just enjoy yourself and learn from others, but also um, uh, uh, teach others something because we always say we are here to learn, uh, to unlearn and to relearn um, as leaders. I mean, I always say that leadership is a journey. Leadership is not a destination. As long as you're a leader, uh, you, are, you are on a journey. So ne never ever think that you have arrived um, uh, you are always, you'll always rise and fall, you always learn, you always self-correct. Um, that is why we are here to learn a lot. So thank you so much really for joining us. We are going to enjoy yourselves to, today. As I'm saying that you'll see uh, many, many great leaders from all walks of life. Some might be people who know, might be people who don't know, but you will learn a lot from these great minds. That is why, or that's what makes us come here every Wednesday. We started these, um, these conversations uh, in the midst of lockdown. It was, it was um, August 2020 um, when, when we realized that uh, we were so demoralized, we were so demotivated, and we needed something that we can just meet as leaders and, and encourage uh, each other. So since then, can we imagine since August 2020, we have been meeting every week without fail. Um, uh, people rush from their, their offices and they, they close offices, others they connect uh, on the road, the others, you know, so it, it, it's a date. People, they know that every Wednesday they have to be here because as I'm saying that, uh, uh, you will never regret uh, coming here. We always learn from, uh, from this great leader. So thank you very much and welcome to our members, to our regulars, men and women who are here every Wednesdays uh, and a particular welcome to, to those colleagues who are joining us for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining us. Please feel at home. Uh, don't 
don't hold back. Don't think that, no, it's your first time. Let me just listen to others. No, we want to hear from you. There is a very good reason uh, while we are, why we are here tonight. So we'd like to hear from you as well. Uh, you can engage the speaker. You can engage each other. As, I'm, as I've said that, it's a conversation. You can do that by raising your hand or uh, via the chat room uh, whenever we, we, we are engaging uh, the speaker. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks a lot. By the way, my name is Mazwe Majola. Uh, I'm from the Worldwide Institute of Leadership and Development. We have been developing leaders, managers. Uh, we've been coaching, we've been training. Uh, we are here for leadership development. Uh, and that is why we are, we, we are here as well. So anything that has to do with leadership, please come to WILD and we will definitely um, um, go alongside with you. So tonight we've got a great speaker wonderful brother of mine and i'm so honored i'm uh, i'm so humbled that really he availed himself because this is the most busy person and you will understand why just because of his uh, of his position um big organization that is leading and we are so we are, we are so um uh, humbled that uh, his made his time to join us. He had the meetings back to back today, uh, but at least he has rushed and managed to say, no man, let me let me go and meet other leaders. And, and uh, uh, how wonderful it is that because we always say leadership, it's about humility. Leadership, it's when you humble yourself and just to go and mingle with other leaders and learn, uh, 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 obviously teach them, uh, but learn, learn from them as, as well. So we've got a great speaker tonight and I really don't want to waste your time. Um, I, 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 I want to, I would like to, to, to introduce uh, the speaker and then we will, we, we will start immediately uh, uh, once, uh, once he has, um, um, uh, once, once you've introduced him. So uh, remember, Leadership, it's a journey. Leadership, it's not a destination. If you want to be a great leader, you develop yourself constantly and consistently until you go to the grave. You stop developing yourself, you become obsolete. Uh, you, 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 you tell yourself that you are a great leader, you stand on the mountain top and I am the best leader ever. You know, we must know that that would be a done for. Great leaders, they're great readers. Great leaders are great learners. They learn from each other and they humble themselves. That is why, as I'm saying that, we are here uh, every Wednesday just to sharpen each other. As an iron sharpen another iron, so shall leaders empower uh, each other. So let me introduce the um, the, the speaker, uh, and then we will uh, we will we will we will uh, start. We are discussing the great resignation, the great resignation that has become um, uh, the novel and uh, and uh, and uh, the, um, uh, uh, the topic. Uh, over since the the, the 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 pandemic started, so there's this huge thing. So when uh, I I I, uh, I I got this topic from uh, our speaker, I said, "Wow, that's a very very apropos. That is very very appropriate and relevant uh, topic for all of us." Uh, as as I said, that we are here just to sharpen uh, each other. So we are hosting Mr. Sony Pizwe. Uh, M. Dolo uh, tonight. Uh, Shoni Pizu M. Dolo is the Shell Downstream South Africa Country Chair and Mobility General Manager. He also serves as SAPREF, that is, SAPREF is the Southern Africa's largest refiner of oil products. Uh, also, as he is a board member and a co uh, chairman. Uh, of, of SAPREF. Tony Pizzo is the chairman also uh, of the Board of Governors 
for the petroleum products industry body, uh, which is called SAPIA, and a council member at the Business Leadership um, South Africa. He has over 30 years leadership experience in various retail executive positions. His background spans industries such as premium fashion retailing, branded fashion wholesaling, convenience retailing, and petroleum products retailing. Mr. Mdolo has extensive business experience skills with a solid track record in business unit leadership, business development, in retail operations, in management, in business planning, uh, also in business strategy, development, management, and relationship management. His leadership skills have been developed through a number of programs, including amongst others, management advancement program and executive leadership program with the Mendoza College of Business through the University of Notre Dame. And also he studied with University of Stellenbosch and also with Gibbs. He has also completed the board leadership program with Gibbs. He recently completed Oxford leadership a program with Said Business School at the University of Oxford. Some of his accolades include developing of high performing teams, developing and leading retail business unit strategies, and assisting startup organizations to expand their businesses into new markets. He trained and qualified as a medical laboratory technologist. Mr. Ntolo has a passion for people development, also for enterprise development, as well as ethical leadership at both executive and board level. That is Mr. Sean Pisa Ntolo Utlanga Mandla Unongwadla. Thank you so much for veiling yourself tonight. And we are so humbled uh, to hear from you, sir. Over to you, Mr. Mtolo, and then we'll be listening to you. Uh, as I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, you will then uh, engage the speaker once he has, has addressed us. You can do that uh, via the chat. Oh, thank you so much. Over to you, Babu uh, Langamanza. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to check uh, with yourself, uh, Prof, am I clearly audible? Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, as a starting point is that uh, I'm, I'm very humbled and uh, uh, really honored uh, to be invited uh, uh, to be participating uh, in this uh, uh, conversation of today because uh, when uh, we were communicating via email, I understood it to be a, a conversation. And uh, a conversation is always an, an absolutely welcome because in that way, we are all benefiting because we are learning. I'm also here uh, to really learn as you've uh, uh, so, uh, so very much said. So I'd like to thank uh, the invitation. Thank you for the invitation uh, to be here today. Uh, and yeah, uh, the topic that I chose uh, was uh, the Great Resignation. A lot of people have been asking me, uh, what are you talking about when you're talking about uh, uh, the Great res uh, Resignation? The Great res Resignation, or as uh, some other people will call it, is the Big Quit, uh, is a phenomenon uh, that is sweeping the world at the moment. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, Prof, uh, uh, it started really uh, to accelerate during uh, and after uh, the, the lockdowns and the pandemic that we are going through. It is defined as an ongoing economic trend in which employees are voluntarily resigning from their current places of employment uh, in masses. Uh, these employees uh, are seeking opportunities and greener pastures elsewhere. So it then becomes a leadership challenge. 
as we lose talent, as people leave our organization, uh, as leaders, it becomes a challenge in terms of uh, how do we respond to that? How do we make sure that uh, we also deal with it and deal with it decisively uh, in uh, 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 you know, stopping uh, the, the, the drain uh, from uh, our organizations? It is something that we uh, in South Africa are not immune to, uh, this, despite the fact that we have one of the highest unemployment rates uh, in the world and also one of the highest uh, uh, Gini coefficients in the world. So these uh, elements uh, would uh, make someone think that no, South Africa is less impacted uh, by this uh, great resignation. Uh, South Africa is uh, less impacted by this big grid. However, this is not true. We are losing talent at alarming levels. Uh, but the scary part is that we are also losing talent in crucial uh, positions. The big thing that when this happens to you or when this happens to your organization, how are you responding? But as you respond, are you also learning when this happens? Are there uh, um, lessons that you are taking and saying, maybe I should be doing things differently? Uh, and maybe let's touch on a little bit on what are the things that uh, could be done differently. So the Harvard Business Review report uh, has uh, had uh, a, 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 a research that, uh, uh, that has been conducted uh, and it says that the bulk of these resignations have been observed uh, significantly in the 30 to 45 age group. That is very important because this is the group that represents future leaders of organizations. So if you are losing, if you are losing people at the crucial level of your organization, your organization will begin to fail it and your organization will begin to be impacted negatively. Uh, and then again, I'll ask the question, what are you doing about it and what are you learning from, from this? This is a group that represents uh, future leaders of organization that we want to retain uh, in the pipeline for sustainability purposes. So if this group starts leaving you, uh, you know, as I've just said, you are beginning to see that you are having problems in your leadership and uh, your succession uh, uh, planning of your organization. We also need to remember that with each resignation, we are not only losing talent, we are also losing corporate memory. We are also losing money as there are expenses incurred from losing talent. And to some degree, we are losing, losing morale within the organization. If people see uh, people leaving, they are asking what's wrong with this organization? Why are people exiting? Am I at the right organization? Uh, what does this mean to me? I need to look and reflect for my own self. The, rest, the great resignation is thus one of the biggest problems or threats that is challenging modern organizations and subsequently is challenging leaders. Whilst the cause of this mass exodus has not been sufficiently uh, pinned down, current studies indicate that COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated mobility restrictions have allowed for our workforce to rethink their careers. The workforce in every organization, people are rethinking uh, their work con working conditions. People are rethinking their long-term uh, aspirations and their long-term goals. So the pandemic has resulted that the status quo is being challenged. When it comes to work conditions and expectations, we'd be fooling ourselves to expect our employees to come into the offices five days a week and spend eight to nine hours in the, work of, in, in, in the office. That's something that is now a thing of the past. So herein lies the beginning of the problem. 
You are expecting your employees to be at work five days a week, eight to 10 hours a day in the workplace, and employees are saying, I don't want to do that. That is developing conflict right there. Our employees have proven that work can continue and then can deliver whilst working from home during this lockdown. As such, we have seen many companies announce that their return back to office looks different. And this comes largely from uh, the employees' expectations. Companies that are responding to this by adjusting their working conditions and their working uh, uh, norms are companies that are beginning to understand uh, how to stem this uh, uh, great resignation that I'm talking about. As leaders, we therefore cannot afford to be oblivious and expect for things to go back to how they were pre-COVID-19. We need to acknowledge that the pandemic has changed how our employees view uh, the world of work. As failure to do this will have immense ramifications on business. We need to relook critically and we need to assess whether our corporate culture is fit for the present and is designed for our employees' needs. We also need to ask ourselves, how are we treating our employees? Is it in line with their expectations? But more importantly, we as leaders need to be open to honest feedback. Some of this feedback can be hard hitting, but we need to be open and receptive to feedback. And this feedback, if it's from your people, it is a, a, a great gift. Employees are saying they are burning out. How are we responding? Some of the drivers of this burnout will include the lean management methods because we have said we need to minimize costs and we are employing min minimalist uh, structures within organizations. What is the impact of this on the workforce in, in an organization? We cannot assume that we know what our workforce is experiencing and that what they are looking for as different people and different, and, and different drivers uh, can be dictated by ourselves only. We've got to be open. We've got to be engaging. We've got to be asking questions. I'll talk just now about the asking questions. Failure to do so may result in more resignations. Research has shown that the top five key drivers for people resigning uh, are uh, and they are in this order. The first one is the actual work itself. When I say that the, the, the first one is work itself, this speaks to, are we utilizing our talent effectively? Our are we leveraging on their strengths and passions? Simply put, do we have the right people in the right role? And are they doing the job where and when it suits them? I'm going to repeat this piece because it is critical post the pandemic. Are employees doing the job where and when it suits them? This is very important and it requires a mind shift. If we as leaders expect uh, uh, our employees to be uh, at their desks at eight o'clock every day of, of the working week and be at our bricks and mortar that we call our offices, we are challenged. We've got to understand that during the pandemic, people worked where they want to work and they worked when it suited them. So how do we then begin to incorporate this in our thinking, to incorporate this in our ways of working, in our work in, 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 in our work, uh, 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 environments? So that's the first one. 
The second one is around the quality of the line manager. The quality of the line managers is the second reason why people leave their jobs. There is a known saying that most of us in this room uh, will understand that people leave, don't leave jobs, they leave bosses. Do we understand what this means? And are we as leaders doing something about it? More, most importantly, how do we select line managers? How do we choose leaders? Are we promoting people because they are not going to challenge our decisions? Are we promoting people who are part of our clubs? The famous boys club or any other club for that matter? Do we have the right leaders leading our teams? And more importantly, what does that look like for your organization? I challenge you to look at your organization and ask yourself these hard questions. As a leader, how much time and effort do you invest in this? Oh, because you've got uh, your, uh, your structure, uh, the boxes in your structure, because they all have names, do you walk away and then focus on the work? If you are doing that, in, 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 in the near future, you're gonna be faced with challenges, but spend time on looking at who is leading my team? How are they leading my team? The third element that people are leaving organizations for, people leave organizations because of their coworkers. What teams are we forming? Are we forming high performing teams? Oh, we are okay to operate with dysfunctional teams. Do the individual team members enjoy interacting with each other or is there artificial harmony within the team? As a leader, are you able to, are you able to identify this and act on it? If the answer is yes to these two top two questions, then what are you doing? What are you going to do about it? Again, the quality of the line manager is crucial as they need to undertake the necessary corrective action. And this must be on an ongoing basis. This is not a one source installment. Interestingly, promotion opportunities is ranked fourth in terms of why people leave organizations. And pay is, is ranked fifth into why people are, are, are leaving organizations. And as leaders, we are known to throw money at people without understanding that somebody might be leaving for much more deeper reasons than money. Yes, money is very important. Money pays the bills. But money alone cannot do it. The other three, four elements are, 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 carry more weight than money. We, we need to rethink how we keep talent in our pipeline. We need to rethink how we grow people. Perhaps we need to think, we, perhaps we need to start changing how we engage with our employees. Instead of asking them the old question, are you happy with your job? We need to change the approach and assume that there is something wrong and rephrase the questions that we ask uh, our people and ask the questions differently. So if you start from the uh, 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 assumption that there is something wrong, you will start asking your people, what do you need to make you excel in your job? How can we make your job more meaningful for you? What support do you require from me? 
And I like this last one. How do we elevate your voice? People in organizations want to be heard. And we need to be asking them, how do we elevate your voice? How do we make sure that you are happy that you are being heard? Small changes like this can change the quality of engagements we have with our employees to address a, a, a number of reasons why they need it. But for all of this discourse to happen, there is an assumed level of trust which needs to be established. How comfortable are your employees to show their vulnerabilities to you? Are people free to speak their mind? Are people free to engage? It goes back to the uh, point I just said. How do we elevate your voice? If people know that their voices are elevated and their voices matter and there's space for them, they will come out and talk about the environment that they are working in. They will come out and talk about the things that they will want to see in the, in the organization in order to effect change, change that will make they are working life better in a change that will make them be engaged employees. Trust is key and it is strongly correlated to engagement, commitment, performance, and creativity in the organization. It is important that we create an environment of trust where our employees feel that their concerns are taken to heart and as such, we'll be confident uh, in our ability to lead them. As leaders, we must also be open to learning from our employees. I can't be Mr. Know-it-all. What can I learn from the people I lead? More importantly, we must continuously seek feedback. I said earlier on, uh, feedback is a gift. But it is only a gift when you take it on board and you trust the feedback that you are getting. The antithesis is also true of for when there is no trust. There is no engagement. There is no commitment. There's poor performance. There's absolutely no creativity. This great resignation has thus provided us with an opportunity to review our corporate uh, culture and assess what policies are holding us back. What policies can we implement to support the change we want to see? The change that will, be, that will keep our talent pipeline uh, uh, being a vibrant talent pi pipeline, being a strong talent pipeline, that will uh, make sure that the organization is well led. Therefore, I ask this question, what is your new way of working and what are you going to do differently in terms of how you are leading people? Prof, I will stop here uh, and hopefully uh, 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 give the opportunity for us to engage. Wow, thank you. Thanks, my brother. Thank you very much. This is very important, very important for all of us. We are here, we are leaders, we are managers, we are executives, we lead teams, we lead organizations, we lead people. Um, and if, as you've just said now that people don't leave organizations, they leave managers. People don't leave companies, they leave leaders. Um, so it's very important as a leader that we hear this uh, and, and we, we, we can um, um, embrace it so that we know how do we treat um, our team members as team leaders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can engage Mr. Mtolo or even each other. You can, uh, uh, I mean, raise your hand and then we'll recognize you. Uh, or you can do that via 
Uh, I can see that Dr. Pet Mazibogo uh, wants to do the first one. Over to you, Dr. Mazibogo. Thank you. Dr. Mazibogo, if you can unmute. Hello, Prof, can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And good afternoon, colleagues. Um, leadership is a subject very close to my heart and thanks, uh, Baba Tlangamanda. Um, one of your, or your second root cause for the great resignation is around um, what, what you told us, the quality of management. So what really gives me a lump, uh, uh, some headaches a number of times is having a leader that tolerates mediocrity amongst some of us, while some of us are basically punching above our weights. Uh, therefore, Langamanda, how do we deal with this issue of leadership lacking courage to deal with mediocrity, whilst among some of us, there are those that are punching above our weight? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Mazubu. Uh, thank you for uh, such a, a strong question. You are absolutely correct. So if we are working in an environment where mediocrity, medio, uh, mediocrity is, is allowed, we have a problem. So an organization needs to have clear performance measurement tools and clear recognition for people that are going uh, the extra mile. So people that are doing more than uh, what is uh, prescribed should be celebrated. That's a starting point. Because we mustn't always start from a negative point of just saying that people that uh, are not performing, uh, we must get rid of them. We must start with those that are performing well. We must focus on our strengths as an organization and celebrate those that are, uh, 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 that are doing well. And then that gives us the opportunity to say to the ones that uh, are being left behind, here is what good looks like. How do you then rise to the occasion? But as we say that, we must also be clear that we will not tolerate a poor performance and deal with it and deal with it decisively. You cannot also at the same time uh, live with a poor performer uh, for too long because by doing that, you are discouraging those that are punching above your weight, uh, above their weight, as you uh, uh, put it, Dr. Mazumi. It is important that as a starting point, it is clear what needs to be delivered in the organization. The goals are clear, uh, the ambitions are clear, uh, the objectives are very clear to everybody. And then the measurement criteria is also clear. Because somebody might be thinking that they are doing things right. And yet they are not meeting the expectation. But if the measurement tools are there to say, you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, uh, Dr. Mazibogo there. Thank you. And then we've got um, two hands that I'm going to, um, to, to allow now. The first one will be Dr. Sfisongobo. He will be followed by Andre Young uh, in that order, please. And Ubabu uh, Zangamantla will, will then respond to, to both of you. Dr. Ngobo, over to you, Mapolo. Um, Prof. Machola, uh, colleagues, uh, our, our guest speaker. Um, uh, thank you very much for such an amazing presentation. Mine, one will be a question, the other will be a comment. Obviously, uh, talking about leadership performance, following what you've just answered now. Today, we, we, we're experiencing a debate in parliament in relation to a motion of no confidence to the entire cabinet where um, obviously that include politicking to the same thing saying something the entire cabinet performing. 
Now, at what level uh, of leadership do you, do you measure the success of government, uh, um, the political administration, and the technical administration? Um, at, 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 at what point you will find uh, Minister Mutsualid has been moving around, arresting people who are employees of government involved in wrongdoing. Uh, and then that they tend to say, uh, and then some are saying he must resign, but they're saying, oh, I must resign when I'm people, I am performing my job. That's the first part. Secondly, I think one of the areas that I feel that um, either possibly we are shy to address uh, Prof. Machola, we know that a uh, court in our country, uh, an independent institution, and judges, magistrate make independent assessment. Well, obviously, we are speaking to them. Judges are human beings, judges are leaders, and judgment must provide leadership that is corrective in action and is corrective in nature. Now, today, a girl who, by mistake, uh, 14 million was deposited into her account, and she 800,000 ENC thief. NCA describe him as a thief. Whilst in the social media, one mentioned they say people who have embezzled over millions, billions of friends, um, are regarded as heroes. Do you regard judges or the court system to be excluded from the leadership of the community uh, in terms of the judgment that we may make? Um, obviously, we know that. The judgment which came in July last year resulted in the in the so-called July unrest. You know, I thought maybe I, I will draw these two, and then allow you to lead us. You, you know, then how do you judge the performance of judges? Because we are speaking of performance. How do you how do you judge a performance of a judge? Is it by many cases they make, or the quality of the case they make? or the decision that in sentencing, you, you know, some they say the girl who's, his, 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 because he's a, he's a nobody, it's easy to sentence her to five years, whilst politicians whom there is evidence of maybe having embezzled millions of friends, you know, they are still, um, yeah, free. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Ngobo. Uh, and then we'll allow Andrew Young, and then after that, Mr. Mdolo will, will respond to both of you. Mr. Young, over to you, my brother. Good afternoon, Prof. Mazri Majola, and all of the uh, regulars who are here, plus the new ones. Sonny, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to use your shortened version of your name. <laughs> you know, when we look at the trends of the Great Resignation globally, yet look at it in the context of South Africa, I'm seeing different patterns. I'm wanting to hear what you think the patterns are locally and how that is different to the global patterns. That's number one. Number two, I think the future of employability, let alone the future of work, looks very different. And we're seeing the future of employability operating a whole new set of demand and supply principles that didn't exist pre-pandemic. Pre so I'm keen to hear your mind on how the future of employability is going to impact the supply and demand mechanism and either further contribute to the great resignation or change it. Because, because I'd like to hear your mind, if this future of employability looks so different, what does us as leaders in this country and globally 
what do we have to prepare for to be able to make sure that you know we can engage people in meaningful work we can we can contribute to the new economic system of people earning a salary for the create for, for the supply of labor and I'll, I'll leave it there thank you Mazui, for allowing me to ask my question thank you thanks mr young over to you uh, uh, mr mtolo thank you very much uh, yeah, I'll start with uh, Dr. Nobo's questions, uh, which is an area that uh, I'm not hugely qualified uh, because it's politics. Uh, so the big thing about uh, measure, measuring performance of political leaders against uh, what we are talking about here, lo looking at uh, the principle of measuring performance in the workplace is slightly different because political leaders should, by virtue of their roles, be holding themselves even to a higher challenge in terms of how they show up. We as society should be holding our politi politicians to account. We as society uh, should be uh, uh, measuring their performance and we should be giving them feedback and what should be, should be created at all levels of government is mechanism to get performance feedback for the employees, I mean, for the, for the politicians. It's a challenge at the moment. We are challenged with, with political leadership in the country. And I, for one, uh, I'm of a view that a lot needs to be done to make sure that this uh, changes and to make sure that we hold our politi politicians to account. One of the contributors to this uh, 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 challenge is the fact that we are a, a significantly divided society. So if one politician does something that is sort of pleasing to the one side of, of society, they get applauded. Whether that measure is actually a good measure or not, it becomes very difficult for a divided nation to really hold people to account and to really uh, uh, understand what is right or wrong uh, in, in, in our country. It's a huge challenge. Then Dr. Nobo also spoke about the judges. I think that it's very important. It is not the number of cases that the judges uh, 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 sort of overseas that should uh, be talking about uh, whether uh, there's good leadership or not, but it is the quality of the judgment. Is the judge uh, brave to make decisions that are not popular, but they are the right decisions? They are the decisions that are ethical. They are decisions based on facts, their decisions based on not, not, not just who is uh, uh, doing the wrong, but what is being done wrong. And what is the impact of that wrong to the wider society? And if a judge can work through that, I think we can see uh, the quality of judges uh, uh, being at the right level not suggesting that it is not. We know that we've had uh, some challenges uh, with some of the pronouncements around that uh, uh, recently. But as a society, we need uh, uh, good political leaders. Dr. Nobo made the example of uh, uh, Minister Mutualeji where uh, some people are marching against what he's doing. We also should be able to say, um, what is criminality and what is the right thing that we should be doing? Some of the people are saying that the minister should be allowing criminality to exist. The challenge in, in, in our country, especially at government level, is that some of the government leaders and some of the political leaders are scared to govern. And that's something that we, as its citizens need to contribute in changing.
We cannot have a government that is scared to govern. And we can't have a government where the leaders, when they make decisions, they are always questionable. That needs to change. Mr. Yang, the trends are very different. The global trends to South African uh, 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 trends are, are, are very different. The starting point that uh, uh, makes the trends different from uh, uh, South Africa to what is happening globally is that we have a limited skill pool. And as a result, you find that it is easier for South African for South Africans to leave their current roles and move on to the next role because it is the same few people that uh, are qualified for the role that are attractive to different organizations. And as an overlay to that, we have challenges of uh, 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 the past that we are also trying to correct. And you find that a particular segment of uh, uh, the workforce is more attractive than the other when it comes to uh, attracting uh, 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 talent. But more importantly, uh, the things that I, I spoke about earlier, the five points that I spoke about earlier, that uh, are, are, are the reasons why people leave their jobs. You in your organization need to make sure that you look after those things, after those elements. Because if people are doing jobs that excite them, that motivate them, they are in the right roles, you will find that uh, they will not easily leave the organization. If they are led by the right people, they will not easily leave the, the, the organization. They will still be uh, headhunted. There will still be, you know, an effort to attract them because, you know, people are, you know, the ways that you use the employability uh, of this small pool of people that, that are attractive, their employability is, is very high and uh, it's, uh, they, they are uh, always attractive to the next employer. But as a nation, we have a bigger challenge of do we have the workforce that is right for the needs of developing and growing this economy? Or are we taking uh, square pegs and trying to fit them uh, 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 into round holes because they look attractive? I'll stop there, Mr. Young. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mdolo. Thank you so much. We continue with the, uh, the engagement. Um, I'll take the next three colleagues uh, in that order. They will follow each other. Then uh, Ubabu Mdolo will respond after oh, four, I mean, three of them. Uh, the first one will, will be my brother, Joel Sibanda. Uh, and then he would be followed by uh, Professor Zide. Uh, and Professor Zito will be followed by Simpio Mgadi in that order, please. Then uh, Obabum Tolo will, will respond uh, to three of you. Uh, Bra Joel, over to you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Prof, uh, for the opportunity. Um, my, my question is actually a three pronged uh, question. Firstly, is, uh, you know, do we generally believe that? the economy in our country has been shedding jobs from top to bottom. And I think that's, in, that's a, a, probably a very kind of um, silly question to ask now, but I think it's definitely important for this discussion. And if we believe that our economy has been shedding jobs top to bottom, then it means the vacancies that we are seeing at the professional level are happening as a result of migration uh, of skills out of the country into other countries. And if that is happening, if people have uh, the, the courage to leave their home country and go and work elsewhere, is that not an indication that as a leader, no matter how good you may be walking into that particular industry, you're not going to make any meaningful change. And the reason being is that 
we as South Africans, we are consumers. We, we don't do a lot of research and development in, in all spheres. I mean, and probably I can't think of any now where we can be proud to say this and this is developed in South Africa. Uh, it was just a good thing that we had with the Omicron virus that came in that we rather the COVID and we picked up the Omicron state, which was good for the country. But generally we know research and development is lacking. With that in the picture, you know, uh, how can we as, and then probably I'm changing the tone a little bit and say, how can we as leaders change that status quo? Because no matter how good you may be in leading, uncertainty will be engulfing that organization, which is the very same thing that made other people to migrate and go to other countries. So you're kind of creating a continuous vicious cycle of people coming in, going, having leaders who are ineffective, not because they are not capable, but because they are in a very uncertain environment where it's very difficult to make any decision. Let me stop there, Prof, for a while. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, uh, Brother Joel. Uh, the next one, I think it was Prof. Gordon Zide, uh, and then you'll be followed by Piwe Mgati. Over to you, Prof. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Um, am I audible? Yes, sir. Go ahead. We can okay. hear you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the prof mine is probably going to be a comment uh, rather than it being a question. And I want to thank um, Mapoloba for, for raising this very pertinent question about the performance measurability of our politicians. Um, Fact of the matter, and I'm going to be brutally honest here. Fact of the matter, colleagues, is that I, and I'm happy that there are government officials present as well. Our rainbow nation has become a divided nation. And it pains my heart as a South African that I realize that unfortunately, we are slowly but surely moving into a direction that is making the oppressors, the imperialists and the racists much more happier now than it was ever before. Because when we run short of ideas, we always blame apartheid. No, it's a legacy of apartheid. And I say to myself, if we were a proud African government, we should really not be blaming apartheid for our own inadequacies. Right now, we know the normal three evils which are spoken about, um, unemployability, I mean, Mr. Mdolo spoke about that, poverty and illiteracy and all of that. But what is our government doing? Schools have been closed in some areas. The pit toilet pit system is still there. The infrastructure is absolutely dysfunctional. And you have children in rural villages walking a distance of about 10 kilometers to a school. Meanwhile, a school that was probably about uh, 100 meters away or even 200 meters away has been closed down. And you begin to say to yourself, what is wrong with our government? I'll tell you what is wrong. You know, our government is not accessible. It is some ministers. If you are endodom zizide, or you are a Mazwe Majola, they take uh, time if they ever do and say, but in which political organization does this person belong? Whereas you've got some serious issues to raise, but they have given themselves the right to be a no all. It cannot be. And I was happy, Mr. Mtolo, when he said, Look, as a leader, 
you cannot be a know-all. That's a very uh, humble approach, which I identify with. And finally, um, you know, they will listen to you if you are a declack, but if you are a Mtolo, a Zide, they will never listen to you because they are so pompous up there. They don't really have the touch with the people on the ground. And finally, cadre deploy deployment. Our government is appointing people at senior positions or even junior position who are not supposed to be there, but just because they belong to a particular political party, then they are given employment. That is why um, Dikeni and Kumede speak about the new democracy, the, the poverty of ideas and the retreat of intellectuals. It's a sorry state of affairs, but um, these guys don't have a sense of performance measurability. Thank you very much, Prof Majora. And thank you very much, Mapoloba, for putting this question. And thank you very much, Rangamanda, uh, um, as I pause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof Zita. Thank you so much. Uh, now we'll take uh, Mr. Mgadi. Uh, Mr. Mgadi, over to you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Am I audible, Prof? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to ask Uba Wudlangamanda, which is, um, what advice would you give to young people of this country who have happened to enter the arena of management or leadership roles in government or in the private sector and in an instance where the old guard is resistant to transformation and innovation? And how can young people drive or implement their vision of positive change without being bullied or intimidated or sabotaged by those who are resistant to change for the better good? Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mgati. Thank you very much. Over to you, uh, Babu Langamanda. Uh, we can just respond to those three colleagues. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, colleagues. Thank you uh, uh, for those uh, questions. Uh, let, let me start with uh, uh, the comments that were made by uh, Professor Sid. I think uh, the, 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 the messages were very, very sharp. Uh, the messages were very sharp and straight to the point. Uh, and uh, some of the messages uh, actually resonate with me personally because uh, uh, I said earlier on is that um, when we look at uh, our political leaders, some, some of them, you know, you can safely say that they are scared of doing what they are supposed to do. Uh, they are scared of taking the role of governing. Uh, and that is why uh, you have uh, Prophet Azide having such uh, 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 sharp words. Uh, one of the things that Professor Azide spoke about is accessibility. Accessibility is one area uh, that will give us the opportunity to give feedback. We can't give feedback if people are not accessible. Because we need to be able to give feedback and say, I do I I do but this particular area, you could have done it differently. And that, that feedback then needs to go uh, uh, into the collective where it really measures uh, uh, the person's performance and we can give them feedback say, we want you back because of how you are performing. But the lack of that and the lack of accessibility is depriving us of this. Then I'll go back uh, uh, to Babu Uzbek. I mean, uh, very, very uh, difficult introduction uh, of, of, of the conversation because, uh, you know, is the economy shedding jobs? Indeed, the, the, the economy is shedding jobs, shedding jobs at an alarming rate. Uh, if you look at uh, the recent statistics where we are saying that employment is now sitting at close to 36%, uh, of, of people are unemployed. So the, the economy is shedding jobs. Uh, and uh, in my view, the economy is shedding jobs across the value chain. I think people that are at the top of the value chain uh, are the ones that are leaving the country for cleaner pastures. But people that in the middle of the uh, value chain and going lower, they don't have that, that, that luxury. And that is where you see uh, uh, most of the, of the suffering. However, 
what we should be focusing on as citizens, uh, what we should be focusing on uh, in support of government and working with government is to really restructure the economy. Because this, this economy was not designed and is not structured uh, for sustainability of uh, the people that are now coming into the way, into the workplace. So the system, the, the, the economic system uh, is in dire need of a, a restructure and a complete overhaul. And with that, I'm probably going to touch on what uh, uh, Mangatini asked about in terms of what is the advice uh, for young people. I'll come back to some of the, uh, uh, the things that Ubabu Spanda spoke about. What is the advice of young people? Young people should be focusing on developing themselves. It is hard out there. It is cold out there. And if we are going to begin to say things have changed, uh, 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 for our children to, to get jobs, uh, it is now becoming a little bit uh, attractive. We are lying to ourselves. If you look at uh, the JSE, by way of example, who are the leaders of the JSE examples? It is the same leaders that used to lead those organizations. And the cultures have not changed. So young people should make themselves even more attractive by focusing on themselves uh, to developing skills and, and really uh, 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 and making themselves attractive in terms of I am a, 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 a skilled. And, and, and developing skills is not just about making sure that you've got a degree only. That's very, very important to have a degree. But how do you then sharpen the knowledge that you've obtained from university? How do you take lower roles and how do you uh, 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 find uh, 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 people that will mentor you? How do you find people that will have the right conversations? Yes, there are not many of them, but those that are there, and it comes back to the, uh, uh, to the leaders. Are we patriotic enough to be extending ourselves to say, I will take on young people and make sure that I help them on the journey? Because without that, we're not going to be able to, uh, 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 to move forward. And it, it, it goes to what uh, uh, Obama was talking about. Uh, why are people leaving uh, the country? Because there are greener pastures uh, elsewhere. First of all, patriotism. We, I think we, we, we lack that as a country. If we can grow patriotism, and then reshape the economy. And then we uh, who are older, uh, 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 Professor Majora said, we should continuously be learning. Are my skills of today going to contribute positively? I should be learning. I should be sharpening my skills. I should not be saying that uh, I have arrived. I'm now okay. What does the economy of today need? And do, my, do, do the skills that I possess match the needs of the economy? And that for me is the advice that I'm giving to young people. Look at what the economy needs and make sure that you map what you are doing uh, 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 to that. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll, I'll stop here, uh, Professor Major. Wow, thank you, thank you. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, uh, gentlemen. Sorry, just, just one thing. Uh, Obama Spanda asked, what, what are we, the, the, the contribution that we are making as leaders, is it enough? Because uh, the, the economy is shedding jobs. The economy is not appropriately structured. The contribution that we're making as, as, as leaders and that we should continuously be making as leaders can never be enough. But at the same time, we cannot say because the contribution that the leaders are making, uh, we should then just walk away from it. I think the challenge is that how do we redesign the economy? But continue doing these small things about making sure that those few that are employed, 
those few that are employable, uh, they carry on being employed. And what conversations are we having with them to say, how do you, you know, how do we make the circle bigger? Thank you, Professor Macho. Wow, powerful, yeah. power, power, powerful, uh, Babum Tolo, powerful. We are learning so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you can still uh, engage uh, Babum Tolo. Um, uh, I can see that I think Dr. Kuma, do you, want to, do you want to come in there? Who's saying hello? Uh, Barat. No, no. Uh, I Sorry, think can you hear me? Oh, oh, uh, 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 are you, do you want to ask your question, Barat? Yes, I just wanted to add some uh, input from my. Okay, just just hold on. You must raise your hand so that we can uh, acknowledge you. But but I'll come back to you just now. I was just asking. Uh, I, I see that Dr. Tuma Mangi. So was your hand up or, or, or what was it? I want to acknowledge you if you wanted to to engage the speaker. Yeah, yes, Prof. Uh, my oh. my hand is up. Okay, okay. Now we'll come back to your talk. Let's start then with uh, Brother Parats. Uh, it would be Parats, and then we'll take uh, Dr. Mangisa, and then Uba uh, Then we'll we'll um, we'll respond to you, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is insightful. This is thought provoking. This is wonderful. I love it. Thank you very much, Parats. Uh, over to you, sir. Are you able to come in there, uh, Parat? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you yes. now. Thank, you, thank you. Ahead. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I just want to add my input as uh, also a leadership in my enterprise. You know, it's difficult times. And the one thing as leaders you can capitalize is that whoever stood with you through last two years of hard times should not shouldn't resign and engage with that manager staff whatever is it's you question yourself where you went wrong but if if they with you now you capitalize through dark times there's light at the end of the tunnel we work hard we put together and also, I believe if someone resigns in my organization, I give a holiday period, two months, they will want to come back, you know? So give, give the bait is leadership as a parent. You, you have problems with your wife, your children, you don't throw them away. That's the relationship you have in your business, your enterprise, with the staff, you know? But at the same time also, in defense of the leadership, uh, they cannot hold you hostage. So it's, you set proper example. If, if people are going to leave you, it's your own demise, something you're doing wrong. But people just need love, support, strength, respect. Then you will only go upwards. But it's, you know, my organization, I'm talking about my organization, and I must be very happy to myself to say that, you know what, all my staff, I've had no resignation. I've not fired during this bad time. And the motivation now is when I was in trouble, you stood with me. And now we are going to work hard and fix things. And that, I think, is the biggest thing. When you have a bond of family love, you only grow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Barak. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, you'll be followed by Dr. Mangi, sir. And then after that, uh, Mr. Mtolo will respond. And I will take the last round, ladies and gentlemen. So please do raise your hand if um, you still want to engage uh, uh, with the speaker. I will take the last round after uh, Obabu Mtolo. Uh, then we'll, 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 we'll uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll go towards the closure of the, of the session. Uh, yeah, Dr. Mangesa, over to you, my brother. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. And uh, thank you very much uh, to Mr. Mdolo. I joined at, at the tail end, uh, but resignations are resignation. And uh, therefore, I would want to be practical, you know, in engaging uh, with uh, Mr. Mdolo. Uh, 
it's a practical reality uh, in one of uh, the companies uh, within the realm of uh, South Africa. Uh, and it's in a private, uh, it's a private firm, not owned by government. Uh, it continues uh, not to do well, you know, financially. The business continues not to, you know, uh, achieve what it says to achieve. And employees, especially the skilled employees, your engineers, they live in numbers. Uh, the, the executives, they have been there for quite some time. They are not changing. They continue to be in the organization, to lead the organization. The board, they continue to still, you know, try to guide, but the firm continues to fail in the absence of both EXCO and the board. Now, my question is, how do you then turn around this particular firm, you know, so that uh, you don't have this skilled employees, you know, leaving this firm, you know, in numbers, because the reliance would have been in this skilled who are living, but obviously they have to live because the firm is not doing well. They want security. And the reality is the executives are still there. You know, the board members are still there earning, you know, these hefty benefits, you know, that they are earning. What should we do to make sure that this firm turns around and therefore uh, discuss skilled employees, they can be retained and if possible, come back, you know, for the survival of this entity. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dr. Mangisa. Thank you very much. We'll go uh, back to Mr. Mtolo now. Uh, and as I said, that then uh, we'll just pick up the last round if the other colleagues you still want to engage. I still, I still see more hands. Uh, that will be our last round, ladies and gentlemen. Please do note that. Um, over to you, uh, Mr. Mtolo. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, maybe uh, just starting with, with Barat. Barat's comment was around uh, uh, how do you make sure that your people feel appreciated? Uh, and, 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 and that, you know, uh, is something that is very important. I mean, the things that I spoke about at the beginning of uh, uh, the conversation, those things are the things that say to employees, you are being appreciated. And if somebody is being appreciated, they will do more. They will do more than what you, 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 you are expecting and what they, they are supposed to be delivering. Dr. Mangisa, I think, yeah, you, I, I like the fact that you are practical and you, you are looking at an example. So we spoke earlier on, uh, as, as, as a collective here, we spoke earlier on about uh, performance measures and clear goals. I think in this particular organization that, that, that you're talking about is that the executives, they, they can't be a law unto themselves. The executives need to be measured in terms of, are they performing? The reason why the organization is not successful needs to be understood. So the, the performance measures of those executives uh, needs to be very, very uh, uh, scrutinized a, a, a lot to say, are they really performing? If they're not performing, then they, they need to be held to account. And that's where you start. And if you did that, you've got the opportunity then to look at the engineers uh, that are scarce skills that are leaving the organization to say to them, we are addressing the challenges that this organization is facing. If you don't address the challenges that the organization is facing of an executive team that is not performing, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it's not performing because the, the organization itself is not delivering results. The executives are, 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 are employed to lead the organization to success. And if they are not leading the organization to success, they are failing in their roles and they need to be held to account. And, and as a result, if they are being held to account, you are going to be able to begin to, uh, to retain and even attract back uh, those scarce skill engineers that are saying that this is not home for me. This is an, you know, one of the things that I spoke about earlier on is morale. 
It's one of the things that is making people leave the organization if the morale is, 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 is not at the highest level. And you cannot have a, a, an organization with high morale, an organization that is not achieving its uh, financial objectives. Thank you, Dr. Mangi. So that was, uh, that was an interesting question. And uh, you know, we, can, we can really spend time on this one because uh, it's practical and, 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 and it will be an exciting conversation to have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Uh, with uh, with your with your respect, Prof. Uh, can I ask a follow up question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doctor. I, I, uh, Mr. Mdolo, thank you very much uh, for the response. But uh, I want to take it further because uh, the firm continues not to do well in the presence of the board, and the board members are not resigning. They have been there for quite some time and they've seen the firm not doing what it's supposed to do. What was the problem at the board level? Why at the board level? There seems not to be something done, you know, uh, so that the firm is able to do what it is meant to do. Is the problem not at the board level? Is the problem not at the executive level as to why the firm is not doing? The challenge is at the board level, what should be done there? Because the firm is failing when they continue to oversee, you know, the firm continuing to fail. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Mangisa, you are, you are so right. And what, what are the shareholders saying? Because the shareholders uh, uh, are the ones that are bringing the board and the board is doing what they are doing on behalf of the shareholders. And if the shareholders are not reacting to it, the board will continue uh, to be a, a blasé to the performance of the executives. And the executives will continue running the firm down. So where the board is failing, the shareholders need to step in. Because as a shareholder, you want to see returns. And if you're not seeing returns, uh, yeah, you need to be asking yourself, why am I even in this? Thank you very much. I appreciate the response. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you. We'll take now, um, uh, Dr. Pet Mazibugo uh, wants to come back and then we will take Sengiwe uh, and then in that order, please. Um, and then we'll allow uh, Mr. Mdolo to respond. Uh, and after that, uh, Babu Mdolo, you can just give your parting shots as well. Uh, after responding to these two um, uh, uh, colleagues, then I will I will come back and close this session. Uh, we start with uh, Dr. Mazibogo, over to my brother. Thank you, Prof. Babu um, Amanda, I would want you to touch briefly on the effects of a fourth industrial revolution and tie it up together with the statement that you made earlier on of a uh, one, preparing himself to be future fit. And then secondly, do you believe that there's enough lead indicators right now for the current leadership to make that switch into making sure that the place of work as we have today, even our own employees are, will be future fit at the time that it is needed the most. Thank you so much, Prof. Over to you then, thank you. Thank you. And then we'll check Shengi uh, Over to you, Shengi. Thanks, Prof. Machola. Um, so my question is really around, I mean, we all always complaining about uh, the deficiency of skills in, in the public sector, which is very important. Um, I mean, it's very important that we have people who have the requisite skills to deliver on the things that are required. So as, as leaders, what is our role and responsibility in making sure that the, the public sector, so I mean, if you look at the SOCs, if you look at uh, you know, with actual government departments, what is our collective responsibility in making sure that um, they can attract and retain professionals? Um, because it is it is a challenge. I mean, sometimes when we work for the public sector, um, you know, you get a sense that the public thinks that, you know, you have been done a favor, uh, you know, for working for government as if you are not qualified or as if, if you're an engineer working for government, you are less of an engineer versus the one who works for the private sector. and you know, you're expected to accept um, 
less pay and a lot of, um, you know, um, lack of gratitude. So what is our collective responsibility to make sure that we have the right kind of people with the right skills and the jobs in the public sector? Because if we just fix the private sector on its own, we are going to continue having those uh, challenges in terms of service delivery. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Mr. Mtolo. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Prof. So, Dr. Mazibuga asked about uh, the effects of uh, uh, the uh, effects of the fourth industrial revolution uh, uh, into the econ on, on the economy. I think I think the, uh, uh, what we should be talking about is our schooling system. Is our schooling system uh, designed uh, uh, to be able to take care of the economy of the future? Uh, be the fourth or the fifth industrial revolution or the sixth industrial revolution, but is the schooling system that we have today uh, fit uh, uh, to be able to, to answer those needs? The schooling system uh, needs to uh, be addressing uh, those needs. The effects of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, fourth industrial revolution are beginning to show themselves. It is changing. Uh, the workplace is changing. The needs that are required in the workplace are, uh, are, are changing. And as such, uh, I spoke earlier on about uh, myself, is that if I look at myself and look at the skills that I possess today, will these skills uh, be enough to take care of me uh, in the changing environment that we have, in the digital world that we are in today, in the AI environment that we are having today. So the, the, the effect is that, the biggest effect is that uh, we need to change our skills. We need to change ourselves. We need to understand things differently and we need to be sharpening our skills and we, we need to be learning a lot more in order for, for us to be uh, uh, effective participants in this uh, fourth industrial revolution that everybody is, 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 is talking to. Then Uzo uh, Sengi is asking about the, uh, uh, the public sector. I think the first thing about the public sector is that, again, it talks to the quality of our politicians because there is no reason why the public sector is not attractive to the leaders that are in the uh, 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 private sector. So there should be a lot of work making sure that the, the workplace in the public sector is attractive. And there's that patriotism that I spoke about that says, uh, I should be okay with working for government. It is our government. This government is playing a huge role in terms of shaping the future of our children. So why should I be embarrassed by working at a, 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 a platform that is shaping the future of my children? Who must work there? If I'm not patriotic enough to say, I've got the skills, I can uh, uh, play a role there. And that is the role that we as uh, citizens should be playing in terms of making sure that the public sector is attractive, making sure that the, uh, the, 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 the justice system takes care of uh, the corruption that happens uh, in there. And we always uh, mistakenly say corruption is only in the public sector. Corruption is in, in both sectors. But if we start dealing with that, you'll start seeing people that are seeing the uh, public sector in a more positive light. Thank you, Professor. So in closing, uh, what I would like to say is that leadership is a, is a huge challenge. and. Uh, uh, kudos to you, uh, uh, Professor Majola and your team for creating platforms and for creating environments where leadership is spoken about. And there's nobody that uh, uh, is, 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 is uh, you know, uh, the one person that holds everything in leadership. We all should be making a contribution on leadership and we should all should be making a contribution in learning on how to do things better and how to make this country function a lot better. The country, everybody has been saying for many years that the country has a lot of potential. However, the country is deprived 
uh, of its full potential by us who are not wanting to contribute in the, uh, in the dialogues like this, making sure that we help each other and hold each other by hand to say, let's move forward, let's contribute this, let's change this. This is what this is, should be looking like. And this is what we should be doing in making sure that uh, indeed we get there. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, and I look forward to uh, engaging with you uh, in, in uh, uh, future uh, um, executions of this uh, um, engagement. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. We'll be definitely um, engaging you more, Dr. or uh, Mr. Mtolo, to come and, and assist us uh, and challenge us as we've done tonight, because that's what we need as leaders. So we'll be knocking on your door again uh, to come back whenever you're available to empower us, because that's exactly what we have done tonight. We have been challenged, we have been corrected, we have been inspired, we have been, um, uh, we've been motivated as leaders. Uh, so thank you so much for you. Thank you for availing yourself. I know you are a very, very busy person. I know it not has been easy. It's been so difficult uh, really to, to find a, a slot uh, to be with us, with your traveling schedule, with your busy schedule, but uh, still, you 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 did uh, avail yourself. So once more, thank you for your humility. Because as we've said, that's how we learn. We learn from people like you, people who have travelled and traversed the road to come and empower us. So thank you so much for what you have done tonight. Very insightful, very thought-provoking, informative, powerful uh, session. Ladies and gentlemen, the Question, so many questions, really. But the question, uh, obviously, Mr. Mtolo has left with us. How do you treat your team members? How do you lead them? How do you manage them? How do you inspire them? How do you motivate them? How do you reward them? How do you balance uh, results and relationships? In other words, you take care of your employees, you take care of your needs, but it must not be at the expense of results. You drive results as, as a manager, because obviously uh, uh, results is everything. Productivity is everything. You've got to drive results. Companies need those results. But how do you do that without tramping on, uh, on other people's uh, relationship? Can you imagine if you had an employee who would say, I, I, I really loved that organization. I loved it. I wish I, I wish I was still there. I loved working there, but I had to leave because of my boss. I wouldn't even like to use adjectives that will be used, what kind of a boss uh, uh, that employee might say, because of this boss, because of this, because the language that is used there, I mean, to some of us who, who, who deal with executives and leaders on daily basis, uh, whether coaching or training them, or, or uh, you know, the, some of these languages we hear that that kind of boss was, uh, I don't even want to use uh, that language. But can you imagine if you were a manager for someone who would say, or one of your team members would say, you know, I, I, I wish I could try something else. I've been with these organizations or this organization for so many years. I want to leave, but it's so difficult for me to leave because of my boss. You know, the, I can't leave this boss, you know. So it's not about the organization, but it's about the person. So would you like to be that kind of a boss? You know, uh, would someone would say, I, I would like to leave, but to leave this boss, um, it would be very difficult, you know. Some of the, uh, if we use the word, uh, let me say use the word leaders instead of bosses. When they leave organizations, uh, be that person that, that your boss would like to live with, who would say that when they negotiate, I know uh, when we negotiate with different uh, organizations, when they engage us and say, can you please, when they are headhunted, please come and work for us. There is this... Um, a position that will like us. And then you would say during those negotiations, yes, I'll come and join you. But if I can come with my, whether uh, PA or with my sovereign. So, because you know that you want to 
go wherever you go with that person. So ladies and gentlemen, it's up to us as leaders, as managers, to be those kind of leaders who will lead ethically, competently, courageously, with, uh, with passion uh, as, we, as we produce the results, while also uh, taking care, developing, maintaining, and taking care of those relationships. So the, the topic tonight has been mind-boggling, very important for us because we very simple, but so important, practical uh, uh, topic. So I loved it. Thank you so much for joining us. We meet every Wednesday. Next week, Wednesday, we'll be coming back again. Please do join us, as I've said, if it's your first Tam uh, joining us. Now you'll understand why every Wednesday we'll come together because just to be challenged on things, even things that you know, sometimes you do need someone uh, to say it differently as Uba uh, um, or said that um, uh, feedback, it's a gift. So that is very, very important. Feedback, it's a gift. Uh, you need to, and sometimes, to be told uh, how things done or what should be done. So tonight we've been very challenged. Meet us again next week, Wednesday for another powerful session that we'll have. We always say that the people who come here, actually, because we are all leaders, um, as I said, the PS, 90% uh, of people who, who attend our sessions are our past speakers and our panelists. I can even see uh, uh, my sister sis Nyami Mandindi. Nyami Mandindi was our, our, our speaker last week, but she, she has tuned in again. And many, many people who are here are people who have uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, addressed us and coming back because they've realized that here you, it's just a safe space. You're relaxed and then you just engage with your peers as well. So thank you so much. Please do uh, join us next week. Um, but also we've got a, a, a Facebook, is it called Facebook page? It's called Leadership Think Tank. So if you can just please go there and then you can join us. You'd find all sorts of great leaders there. That's where we discuss uh, and continue with our leadership discussions because obviously here it's very time limited. So a Facebook page is called Leadership Think Tank. And then we've got all different leaders from all walks of life that are there. And we are more than welcome to post any leadership material so that you can empower us. On that note, thank you very much. The session is now adjourned. And then we'll see you again uh, next week. Once more, thank you very much, uh, Babu Mtol. Thank you very much, Zanga Mandla. Uh, may God bless you. And then we'll see you again next time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. See you next week, Wednesday. Uh, and stay blessed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Prof. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ismani. Thank you.